Hey thrifters, if you have old video footage on something like this or something like this, you can't watch it on your phone or your tablet or really even your computer unless you digitize it. Now I have several standalone digitizing devices that I can use, but none of these are really as cost effective as a USB style digitizing device like this one right here. This one, you do need a computer to do the digitizing. This is a clear click VHS to DVD kit. I'll be checking this out coming up on Thrifty AV. I want to thank the folks at ClearClick for sending over the VHS to DVD kit. This is a review sample, but that in no way will influence my review of this product. Now, if you're worried that DVD is in the name of this product, don't worry because this will convert to digital files and you can play back those files on your phone or tablet or computer. Before we get into the box, let's look at the outside of the box. This is ClearClick brand and it says VHS to DVD kit. It converts your videotapes to digital format and DVD. I'll be concentrating on digital format, but I will do a DVD. On the back, it has instructions for PC users and for Mac users. I'm going to be using a PC. Mac users, well, you're on your own. Inside the box, here is the unit itself. It does have S-Video on it. Here's a set of patch cables. Here's a software download card. It tells you where to go. I'm covering up the serial number intentionally so no one else uses this. And there's also Mac OS software. And here is a rather extensive instruction book that may be useful to read uh, if you're having troubles. This device does come with a two-year warranty and USA-based tech support, so that's good. Let's get into this package. Now, the leads here are female, so you will need a cable like this to plug into those. The S-Video is female as well. has a USB-A style plug here. The USB on this device is USB 2, but that will have plenty of bandwidth for standard definition video. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the ClearClick VHS to DVD. And it says we're setting up the device, and now the device is ready. This JVC Super VHS VCR has S Video output, so I'll be using the S Video input on the ClearClick. If yours does not, you can always use the composite video input. Before I install the software licensed with the ClearClick VHS to DVD, I wanted to test out and see if I could just use the uh, Windows Cam software. And it is recognizing the device just fine. Looks good. I'm now going to try in downloading and installing the software. The software is a zip file and I prefer to extract zip files before I run them. Now you can automatically uh, select the format or you can manually override and select your own format. And there are settings that you can go into that allow you to adjust brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, and gamma. I'm going to leave them on default and see how well it does on default. It does automatically choose the microphone for AV to USB. That's good. And I do have capture sound selected. I'm having some chroma issues with the uh, JVC Super VHS ET. So I'm going to switch over to the Magnavox, which also has S video output, and see if this one uh, displays chroma better than the JVC does. It's hard to see in this little window, but I'm getting better chroma out of the Magnavox. The first thing I'm going to encode is Touring New Zealand. Hopefully this will not trigger a copyright claim or copyright strike. I'll find out later. Now the software that comes with this, of course, I mentioned the manual setting. Uh, I'm going to leave it on automatic for now. I can choose no filter, black and white filter, or sepia filter, and I can adjust color, brightness, contrast, and gamma at this point. All right, this next menu is do I want to record to a DVD or to a file? I'm going to try file first, and 
I can choose AVI, Windows Media, or MP4. I'm going to go with an MP4 file. And if I already know the duration, I can set it now. Until I register this product, I cannot just do an open-ended recording. But I'm going to go ahead and register this product. I'll probably blur out a lot of this page, but to activate the product, you have to visit an activation website and fill in some information. Once you register the product, you will get a dialog box saying registration accepted. And now I can actually select, I do not know the duration of my video and the recording will be open-ended. Well, there's some beach footage. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to do an open-ended recording of this and let it go. After finishing my recording, it tells me the duration of the recording, how many frames per second, and it shows zero dropped frames, which is good. And when I hit next, it gave me a rather extensive wizard style menu with a lot of options. I can preview, burn to DVD, save as a file, upload to YouTube, convert the file, edit, make a new recording, get help, or quit program. Looking at the media info for this file, the overall bitrate was 2317k BPS, MPEG-4 encoding, 720x480, frame rate of 29.839, chroma subsampling 420, bit depth of 8 bits. It is a progressive scan file when the source was interlaced. Let's look at some of this footage. The automatic setting did not provide a true 4 to 3 aspect ratio. Steam rises everywhere, in people's backyards, in parks, and on a much larger scale, along the steaming cliffs of Rotomahana. The volcanic blast tore a huge chasm right across Mount Tarawera and left the area a wasteland. Tongariro National Park, with its three great mountains, Tongariro, Narohoi, and Ruapehu, crosses several climatic zones, from temperate to alpine from dense forests and ferns to hardy alpine vegetation. Now that image looked a little bit soft, but I cannot blame the capture device when my source material is VHS. I'm now going to switch over to DVD and run some test signals from the Sound and Vision Home Theater tune-up. And I'm also going to test the audio using this NAB Audio System Test CD. I'm going to make sure I get a 4 to 3 aspect ratio at 640 by 480 this time. The first test I'm going to run is a contrast test. On the left you see the source contrast, on the right you see the captured contrast. And it's a pretty close match. Next up is a sharpness comparison. The top is source, the bottom is capture. And there are issues as the little bars get closer together on the capture. Next up is a color bar test with the source on top and the capture on bottom. There's some false color outlining on the blinking boxes on the captured signal. Next I'm going to do an audio test starting with a left channel and right channel checks. Channel check. Left channel. Left channel right channel right channel the left channel and right channel were mixed to mono so this device does not provide true stereo capture phase check in phase in phase phase check out of phase out of phase on the frequency sweep there is definitely amplitude tapering on the low end through the mid ranges up to the mid highs, it flattens out. At the top frequencies, it tapers again. I want to emphasize that the ClearClick VHS to DVD kit, even though it was mixing the stereo down to mono, it was not introducing noise, which is a sharp contrast from this generic EasyCap device that has pretty bad DC offset. The clear click did not have that problem. Considering that this is called the VHS to DVD kit, I feel like I should try to record directly to a DVD with this device. So I'm going to select DVD here. And I'm going to be recording Jurassic Park. 
Not the whole thing, just a little bit of it. And now I'm going to start recording. When I tried recording to DVD, the software froze up. It says not responding, and it has a whole bunch of dropped frames there. I'm going to try it again with another DVD. Okay, I'm trying it again with a different brand of DVD, and I'm still getting uh, dropped frames here. So it probably has an issue with the external burner that I'm using, not being able to keep up with the frame right here. The next step is creating a DVD. It's writing to disk. It now says finalizing the disk. This could take several minutes. If I hold this DVD at the best possible angle, you can see the data is written on here. Let's pop it in the DVD player. Playing this back on the TV set, you might see a little bit of jumpiness. Here's another spot where the dropped frames are pretty obvious. In conclusion, when using the S-Video input on the ClearClick VHS to DVD kit, contrast was spot on, colors were pretty good. It lost a little bit of sharpness, but I have yet to test a capture device that did not lose a little bit of sharpness. It does mix stereo audio down to mono, so if that's an issue, you might want to go with a different device. As far as direct-to-DVD transfers, I did have some drop frames, but that is probably due to the light-on external DVD burner that is rather slow. You'll probably get better results using an internal DVD recorder. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel, and remember, stay thrifty everyone.